Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Apologies for the delay. This is Hoya Locker Room, episode 94. I have with me today an esteemed guest, uh, Mr. Merle Cole, a brother, a friend, a confidant uh, in, this, in this industry of basketball. I just like to start off by saying uh, Markham, my co-host, wasn't um, uh, available today. Uh, he has, um, this was a late, this was a late ad. I mean, Merle and I go way back. Um, so uh, this kind of happened on the fly. So my apologies uh, to Markham for not, for not being here. Um, Merle, um, it's great to have you. Um, I, I'd like to introduce you to our audience. Um, former Nike director, Adidas consultant in the industry, former college player at Clemson, played professionally in Switzerland, correct? Sweden, Sweden, Austria, Sweden, Spain. Sweden and Austria and Spain. Um, been around the game. You're, 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 you, you are a true insider. Um, and uh, I think it's important to have your voice, uh, especially for my young Hoyas um, and their families, uh, because I think what you've already what you've always displayed is you put the players and their families first. Um, we overlapped at Nike, um, um, but I was in sales and you did the brand marketing um, um, piece, um, and I always felt like you, we were left brain, right brain. After I after I became familiar with you, um, so yeah, I'd, I'd like you to introduce yourself to the audience and. You know, please explain the, the Barack Obama photo I used in the intro. <laughs> Mr. Merle Cole. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, again, my name is Merle Cole. I'm a, uh, a, 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 a basketball head. I'm a hooper. Uh, as, as, a, as as old dudes like to say, I'm a former hooper. I don't do it anymore. Uh, but but uh, the game has been a, an instrumental part of my life and, and from a player's perspective um, into the business sector, um, which is where I kind of got my my uh, started getting my my, uh, my my feel for how the game really works from a business perspective and how we are viewed. Um, you always knew it um, as a player; you saw it, um, but you didn't get a real sense of it until you're kind of outside the walls. Sometimes, um, you know, you have some of those moments while you're in school where you go, "Okay, I get it." But then when you get on the business side of it, so oh, I really get it, right? So, um, you know, as Gene mentioned, he and I go way, way back. I actually, um, I'm, a, I'm a product of the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, so I grew up watching those guys get down at Georgetown. Um, so, so, so Gene's tenacity and his aggressiveness and what they, what those guys at, at, at Hoya Nation in those days brought to the table, you know, was inspiring for guys like me. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a DMV resident, so to speak. I, my mother's from Virginia, um, so I grew up in the par partially in the Roanoke, Roanoke Valley area. Um, so it's when I kind of cut my teeth playing basketball. Uh, but always looked up to those guys and, and had an affinity for the brand. And you know, back when they when they wore the gray and blues, uh, a high top with, with 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 not a lot of cushion at the bottom. So <laughs> I go back to those days in terms of watching and seeing, you know, wearing the big puffy puffy Hoya jackets and you know that kind of stuff, man. So. You know, um, y'all excuse my little man. He wants to be a part of the interview too. Uh, <laughs> take the phone, make a nerd, mommy. Too. So, um, so I'm um, I'm pleased to be here. Hopefully, I can shed some insight, you know, on, on some of the things that I've experienced and, and and some of the things that I've been through to help educate kind of that next group of parents and kids as to what this business is and how it really works. Not not the not the glitz and glamour you see on television. And, and that, that's a that's a that's a nice intro from a, an extremely humble, um, dare I say, servant uh, contributor uh, to this game, to this industry, both on the court and off the court. So with that, I'm just going to you know start with uh, your days at Clemson. Um, you know, for the most part, uh, from the time you got there um, until you left, you left a you you an indelible mark on the program. Um, your, your minutes increased every year. Um, you were for sure a three year starter. Yes. Three year starter. Uh, 10 points a game, three, three rebounds, three assists. Uh, your season, se your senior season was your, was your best season, was also the best season for the ball club. Um, so I would disagree. Uh, 
my, my best season statistically um, from an all-around perspective was probably my sophomore year. Okay. Um, my best season scoring was my junior year before I got hurt. So I averaged around 13 and a half a game um, my, my junior year before I blew my knee out. And so I mentioned to you earlier in, 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 the, in the intro about kind of getting a sense of who you are and what you mean to a program and those kind of moments where you go, wait a minute. Um, that was one for me when I got hurt. Um, and I talk about it, um, and I'm not certainly not pubbing uh, any, anything that I've done over my book, but I kind of talk about it in the book that I've written, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. But I hurt my leg my junior year, blew my knee out, I'm done for the season. And I can't walk, and I'm asking my coaches, can they help me get to class? I need the team because I can't practice every day. I can't, I can't get to the gym. I can't go to class. I'm kind of stuck in this isolated space. And I'm going through this torturous, you know, rehab process on my own. Um, luckily, again, as you spoke, man, I have a
You still with me, Merle? I'm with you. I just went and cut out on me. I don't know why. Okay. But can you hear me? I can hear you. You're frozen on the screen, but your words of wisdom is, okay. is, is no important. So, so, yeah, so, again, man, I, I, those weren't life situations that I necessarily had to deal with, but I had teammates who were. I had teammates who were struggling to feed themselves, and they had children that they were trying to find money for to feed. Right. They have, I had teammates whose families never got, a, got to see them play because they couldn't afford to, to travel to get to see them play or couldn't afford the lodging or the food when they got there. Right. All the while, every, everyone around them, from an athletic perspective at these colleges and universities, is racking in millions of dollars. Something about the system just didn't, doesn't seem right. Didn't seem right. And it still doesn't. Um, but again, that, that did change my perspective. Um, and as I got into the business, I ran across more kids who were, who, who were of, in, who were in need and from a from a financial perspective, than and, and, and you do kids who come from my particular circumstance. So, yeah, I definitely wanted to be a guy who was willing to to stick his nose in there. And I don't care what they say; I know what's right. What's right by people. Right. So your your senior year, ninety six, ninety seven, same time as a a gentleman uh, was gracing the court at Georgetown, um, uh, number three. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to tie that in at some point in time later on. Um, but, I, but that, that as I was, you know, semi preparing for, 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 for us chopping it up, I just, I made that recognition. Like you two were, were seniors at the, or, or playing at the same time, uh, uh-huh. collegiately. Uh-huh. So I'll tie that in later. Um, but talk to me about the professional, um, the professional career and, how you got into it from the business side, whether it was by accident, uh, whether it was whether it was intentional, um, and uh, yeah, bring, brings up the speed on that. And if you can get a chance, Merle, uh, hey, I don't don't know each other. We have some we have some folks in our in our circles that that are that are uh, that we are familiar with. So we, we don't know each other. We we've been around each other a few times, but again, don't don't know each other well. Uh, his rival, um, oddly enough, at the time in UConn was Ray Allen. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ray and I actually played on the same AAU team. Um, so Ray and I have known each other since high school. Uh, and Ray's a South Carolina guy, uh, as, a, as am I. So I uh, did have some ties in, in, to, to the Big East as a, as a conference, but not necessarily to, to, to anybody on that Georgetown team. At that time, mm-hmm. uh, but you know how it is, man. When you when you got when you're when you're a player, you play at a pretty high level. You all you you share somebody or somebody that you know played with, played against. You know you have some some synergies and some people, some commonality as it relates to you know some folks in your in, in your circle. It's a it's a fraternal type you know uh, industry uh, sure. from a player perspective and a business perspective. Uh, but so after I got hurt, I rehab um, uh, that that off season or the remaining uh, uh, junior my remaining time of my junior year and you know going into my senior year and had a solid senior year i think i averaged around 10 10 and a half my senior year which is getting an acc's good numbers um and then actually was invited to training camp uh some rookie summer league with uh, the denver nuggets and then invited back to vet camp with the denver nuggets and actually uh <laughs> Was going to be placed on IR, um, and then they made a trade, a two for one trade. Obviously, I was on a non guarantee contract, so I, I, I ended up getting cut and went to the CBA, um, stayed in the CBA that season um, in between Fort Wayne and uh, Sioux Falls. And then the following year, um, started my European journey um, and did that for three years or so. And then um, came back my final year and played in the G League. Okay. Um, the first year that it existed. It was called the D League at the time. <laughs> and, um, we won a championship here in Greenville, my hometown. And that's when all of the teams were Southeastern based. So they were from, uh, I believe, Virginia down through Alabama. Okay. Um, and so we, we ended up winning a championship. You know, again, man, one of those tail end career kind of scenarios where you just kind of enjoy playing the game and know, you know, it's coming to an end. And literally on my thank you tour, you know, because what I did was when I was knew I was coming to the, the, the end of playing, I was calling any and everybody that had, had a hand in helping me um, along the way, whether that was somebody who coached 
be a you know, little league or somebody that took me to practice, you know, whoever it was, I just, you know, just kind of saying thank you because you didn't have to. And one of the people I called to say thank you was um, one of the – had moved from high school basketball at Nike into a uh, – uh, managerial executive role, let's say on, on the, on the sports marketing side mm-hmm. and have asked me if I would be interested in working at Nike. And my initial answer was no, I don't want to sell shoes. Uh, cause again, not being aware of the business, I thought all they did was sell shoes. <laughs> so I had no desire <laughs> to, to, to be the guy, uh, walking around asking, did you want to, did you want to buy some shoes? And so we had you a, want a size nine. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And so we had a, we had a long conversation about what that looked like. He invited me up to the all American camp up in Indianapolis just to take a look at it. And so he kind of explained to me what they did, how they did it. Um, and said, Hey, listen, well, we, we kind of need you. And I said, so what do you mean? So, well, you know, you come from a, a long line of, of uh, a long list, I should say, of, of, of basketball experiences and relationships, and we're we need to rebuild our basketball business and brand. Well, what do you mean? Well, at that time, MJ had had uh, was kind of on the tail was not kind of on the tail end of his his, his career, this pre uh, Washington Wizard days, but he was he was on the tail end of his career. They had lost. Um, you know, some of our young, younger guys like uh, Tim Duncan and, and Kevin Garnett, who were part of that fun police crew, for all you guys who remember those old commercials, mm-hmm. um, they lost those guys to other brands. And so they were really in need of, of rebuilding relationships and, and guys who had relationships with, with, with past players, previous, you know, uh, current players um, who could help uh, get them back into the basketball scene at a high level. Um, and so they wanted to leverage my relationships and thought I'd be a good fit. And we decided to do it for a year on a consulting basis. And if I liked it, you know, we could turn it into something more, more permanent. So that's actually how the the Nike uh, tenure started. So what I want to highlight and and, and for the audience that's listening, uh, Merle, your, your video went out, um, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about it because again, um, your voice and, and, and your words are, are, I, I, you know, are, are, for 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 the families and the players, I think anyone that's listening, um, like again, your your thought your thought process and your experience in the game is immeasurable. That's 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 the word I was looking for. But what 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 you touched on um, was um, something I want to highlight. And this was while you were still playing, or shortly after um, you were finished playing, or leading up to that you began to reach out and talk to those who had touched you along the way or that you had touched along the way. And that's something that um, whenever I have a chance to talk to current day players, um, taking advantage of the opportunity to do the, to do exactly that while you're still playing, while you're still at these universities, um, because it's it's then when you're as you alluded to earlier when you're most valuable, sure. Um, and and that's the time to make those connections because right. again you never know um, how that may play out down the road. Yeah, um, yeah you know, you never know who who's going to be doing what in five, ten, fifteen years, mm-hmm. and you know you never know who's going to ascend to higher heights that could help you along the way. And so, you know, you, you always want to make sure you treat, and I got this from my, my father and my grandfather, both of my grandfathers. Um, I would watch them treat the janitors at their jobs the same way they treated the president. Because they were, they were like, listen, it's a man just like me. Or it's a lady just like my wife. Or, you know, or my daughters. And so they, they, they really were big on, on, community they were big on respect they were big on fairness um and they were big on education and creating opportunity so uh, all that wrapped into the bowl really be into a bowl meaning they were really big on relationships which is when which is what you have to you know what you have to really understand and value as as you move through you know 
transitioning from being a player into whatever your next career um, opportunity may be. So um, you cut your teeth at Nike, you started at Nike, and Nike for 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 any and everyone, Nike's the beast. They're, they're the, you know, they lead the way, uh, particularly in the, in the world of basketball. Um, can you talk to us about how it was to play? Um, and then now you get into the, the business part of the equation. Um, what, what experiences do you think allowed you to um, navigate um, to move differently than maybe someone who didn't have that, didn't have those playing experiences. And the reason why I bring that up, and you know exactly why I bring that up, because I'm always, um, I, I'm always challenged when I find uh, these jobs that very few players know about while they're playing, which is these right. branding, marketing. Like you said, you just thought it was about sales, but I was a sales guy, and that, 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 that was a great gig. Um, because it encompasses all, all the things that you were doing. We were connected. It was a sure. sy symbiotic relationship. Um, so uh, speaking to when you see people who, who were part of the game at an early, at, at, as a players, but they don't transition into the business part of the, part of the game. And if you can speak to that, um, because I, I, think, I think it's a missing link. I agree. I think that most of us, because we aren't made aware of these opportunities, and let's you know, let's be let's be clear and be real about you know what it looks like for you know black athletes. Let's 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 use us as the as as the talking uh, talking point. Um, most most of the jobs that exist for us are are, are sports specific, right? And, and meaning if in the in the corporate landscape of of the shoe game. It's going to be in the sports that we dominate. You know, it's going to be basketball and football for the most part. As you look at the landscape of the other sports outside of those two, within most of these larger brands, you don't find many of us. Um, and so there's a there's a reason for that. Um, and you can kind of draw your own conclusions as to what that is. But you do need to be a we we need to do a better job of making young men and young women aware of these opportunities and what those opportunities entail. I used to have guys come to me when I was in a director's role saying, hey, man, I want to do what you do. And my response was always, well, what do I do? And they couldn't tell me. Mm -hmm. So how is it that you know that you want to do what I do when you have no idea what I do? The approach, in my, in my estimation, should be, hey, man, I'd love to sit and talk to you to get an idea of what it is you do, how you do it, and why you do it. Um, and, and so I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want it to get past these young men and young women who finish their careers, who think that they've, they've got to be placed in a box where their only options to stay around the game is to coach. There's nothing wrong with coaching, but there are a lot of opportunities outside of coaching where they could be, um, be an asset to, to, to a, to a business or themselves. And I speak openly about, um, because it's what I know, I speak openly about the Nike relationship uh, with Georgetown, which is now a brand Jordan relationship with Georgetown. And you and I being insiders pretty much is that, know that that's, that's one and in the same. Um, and, and, and I don't say that uh, in, in a disparaging way. I mean, it's just, no. again, we are insiders. As it says, Nike, Nike Inc. Is, is, is the... Is the umbrella under which all the other brands. Correct. So, so for me, it, it's always been, um, you know, the brands have what, what appears to be sometimes a transactional relationship. Yes. And I just feel like as the, as the landscape has evolved and you being an architect of this current land, landscape, and obviously I want to dive into that too. Um, I, I really miss your face, Merle, just so you know. It's, it's hard just looking at myself. Uh, so I, actually, uh, if you look at job, uh, it's waiting for you to let me in again. Okay, let me can't go pop back up. I'm in your waiting room. Let me see where you at. Um, excuse me, audience. I'm a little challenged here. View gallery. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't find it, Merle. Okay. So I'm gonna keep going. Um, 
So yeah, it's 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 one of those things where um, I, I lost my thought, but I'm, I'm gonna get back to it. See if I can get you back in. Okay, yeah, it's not showing you in my wait, waiting room, Merle. So we'll, we'll just keep pushing. Um, but yeah, I, again, I, I talked about the Nike relationship. We talked about you know everything falling under the umbrella, Grand George falling under the umbrella. Um, but for me, it's just a unique opportunity for the, for these brands to share the business of sports. Um, and, and obviously, if you have current players or former players who made that transition, who better to share that experience? Yeah, but I also think, you know, and you and I know this as well, Gene, like that their job is is not to share. Their job is transactional and to, to make money. The, at the end of the day, um, as much, you know, good feel, goodwill, positive PR, and all the stuff they put out there, the job is to sell shoes to the shirt, T-shirts, equipment, accessories, you know. Uh, and so th that's the job. The job is ultimately is to to put yourself and your clients in a situation where they can push product uh, and that, that can then allow you with what you did and did so well for a long time on the sales side to, to, to make sales, right? So it's our job, truthfully, our, our job as Because we've been through it. That's our job. I would never leave that to somebody's, you know, corporate devices that doesn't necessarily share our, um, our background, our culture, our community alliances. That, that that's that's for us to do. So, with, with, with that being said, because I I couldn't agree with you more. Which is again the the context of me inviting you on Hoya locker room, um, other than the fact that your family and uh, I know how you feel about the program. Um, is to begin to do that, um, to share that. And I, I, and I don't think, um, I can't think of a better place to start than, than the book that you authored, Black Market. Black Market came out in March of two, 2000, two, 2022, 2022. Um, and again, this is not a show to, to, to sell more copies of Black Market, but I think it's a a manual, um, I, th I think it's something that should be required reading. And um, I remember working for uh, Brand Jordan Twin, um, and um, I was fortunate enough to be a part of the first uh, sales force um, mm -hmm. for the brand. And I remember a book came out by William Roden called The $40 Million Slave. Yep. And um, you know, um, working for the brand and reading that book, the book wasn't extremely congratulatory of Michael Jordan. Right. Um, there, there, there's chapter eight, chapter Ocho, um, speaks about brand Jordan, speaks about Michael Jordan. And it talks about the disconnect, the responsibility. And where I'm going with this is that I took that book and I brought it to a Jordan sales meeting. And I gave it out to all the all the other sales reps uh -huh. because I, I I thought it was beneficial to see um, a alternate point of view of what we're selling. Right. Now, and that probably was a manager's or a boss move, twin. But you know, we see ourselves that way. Um, right. But but that's how I feel about black market. I, I think it should be required reading. Um, but where I want you to take that is. With NIL being what it is today, um, mm -hmm. black market to me um, are the ingredients. Are the uh, is the precursor. Sure. Um, bring us up, bring us up to date from your point of view. How you think you've helped bring this NIL thing to fruition? The challenges of current day and where you see the challenges of the future. And I know that's a lot, but. Um, we already have established you don't have a problem taking the mic. So no, no, I'm good. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a lot to unpack in yeah. terms of where where the current landscape of of the NIL 
honest right now. Um, obviously, and, and for those of for those of your listeners who don't know, um, I, I consider myself one of the guys that's responsible for NIL being in existence. I, I did prison time, uh, five and a half months, because um, our for Gene and I's former company, Adidas. Um, asked me to send an invoice because they had, they intended to help a kid and his family go to Louisville. Uh, how I go to prison as a consultant and the folks that cut the check don't, I have no idea. But when you look like we look, um, the laws don't apply to us the same way they do to others. Um, especially when you've got other coaches who don't look like us, who were known to have done the same things and either, even at a higher level. Um, not, not even so much. Uh, not, not so. I'll say it this way: not, not have any uh, other than somebody speaking negatively from a media perspective. Not having any, any, um, any consequences. Mm-hmm. So, I, I feel like what what we've been through, um, and and really speaking to the fairness of of the industry. There, if, if we literally and and figuratively live in a capitalist society. Why are you capping what young men and young women can make? Why are you? It's, it's but it's about control, and it's only about control in the, in the situations and scenarios um, um, that that we we dominate the sport in. Uh, the, those those same rules don't apply in predominantly white sports, or didn't. Uh, so that same level of control, whether it be the ability to turn pro. Um, ability to work during the summers, uh, you know, all of those things uh, are, are now being viewed in a different light. Uh, the 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 NIL, so to speak, as I continue to describe it, as a is a band aid on a bullet wound. Mm-hmm. Um, because you are still capping in a lot of places. Uh, states are now getting involved and have. Are starting to cap agent fees, and so which which discourages agents from going out and finding other opportunities because they're not going to make any money. Uh, you've had you had uh, in Georgia, you had a, a state law that was passed by the former governor or the current governor that basically gave the, the state the right to take 70, 70 percent of an athlete's NIL money and redistribute those funds how they saw fit. And so when you start getting into the realities of, of, of what this money is doing, it's scaring, it's scaring people because now you've got these young athletes, predominantly black and white, I mean, black, men and women, young black men and women, um, who now have the uh, ability to change uh, the economic conversation, which scares others. Um the thing I don't like about it, again, I'm, I'm, I'm glad these young, some of these young men and young women are earning lots of money. The problem I have with it is not necessarily based on abilities, playing abilities. A lot of times, if you look at the current landscape of it, it's those that are the most marketable, mm-hmm. which doesn't necessarily equate to the best players. Um, the other side of that is not everybody on a team is getting NIL monies. So you've got a guy that's been practicing his butt off running in that hot sun, giving his body up, being a great teammate, and because he's not stepping on the floor on on, on, on the field, on the court, he has no value. That's basically what you're saying. His value is just getting the, getting the scholarship to go to school. I think that's garbage. I think these schools who earns, earn millions and millions and millions of dollars should be required after each of these student athletes, men and women, complete a year of, of, of play and class, they are required to put twenty five to fifty grand in an account for them to give them a head start on life. That has nothing to do with whatever additional NIL monies that, that they may uh, they may receive. But uh, these schools should be held accountable. And, and again, they, they go back, well, they might not be able to afford it. Well, if they couldn't afford it, they wouldn't be starting these NIL collectives at these schools that have millions and millions of dollars to now pay NIL monies out to. So you can miss me with that they don't have the money for. Yeah. And the, the thing that I would interject there, um, because again, I, I, um, I'm looking at this from someone who 
was probably one of those players that would not have benefited from NIL. Um, but what I what I what I what I think is being missed is the opportunity for everybody to eat. Right. And that's my point. whether whether that's, that's that's exactly your point, and whether that is money set aside, um, but it should be the opportunity to um, the ability to show how those opportunities can be had. So someone like yourself or someone like me can can come in and talk to these kids about thinking intentionally about how to benefit from the current landscape. Um, because well, they're, they're, it's a bigger they're, they're, conversation, Gene. And it's a bigger conversation just now about benefiting from the current landscape. It's a bigger conversation about getting the acclimated to the real world yeah. as it relates to taxes. I agree. I agree. As, as it relates to you know uh, um, investment strategies, as it relates to savings, uh, as it relates to home buying. Because I mean, you can go down the line about fiscal responsibility and giving them an, a head start on those things that our generation and generation before me, generation before you, and maybe even our parents weren't exposed to. That's the bigger conversation. Yeah, That's how you, we change the playing field. Yeah. And you're well, you're much more well versed, um, because that's exactly that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Because it's it's a bigger conversation, but for me, the conversation starts with again someone that's been through this, someone that's helped establish uh, what's currently going on, um, and and has the real life examples. Um, we've spoken um, in depth about the players that you've touched um, um, that have had uh, incredible impacts on the game. Um, and I, and I want to digress for a second. I want to go back to the fact that you were able to be a director at Nike and a consultant at Adidas in and of itself to me speaks volumes because those two are, whether they're nemesis or enemies or, um, but that that's remarkable and to do it at, at such a high level. Um, if, if you could speak to some of the experiences which have hel helped shape uh, what you're speaking on, what, your, your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, again, the, 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 the ability to be inside of the walls um, and, 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 and make, make decisions and have, you know, personal touch points with, with high profile guys like, you know, Carmelo. Um, I, I ran his business his, for his, his first two years in the NBA. Is his footwear and, and uh, apparel business from a sports marketing standpoint. Um, so I was a part of his his, his product design and launches, um, and think really highly of him as a, as a person. You know, I had an opportunity to uh, to be a part of LeBron's recruiting team. I wasn't hands on with him as as you know as hands on as many others, but I was around. Um, mm -hmm. But guys that I had real. You know, real relations with Carlos Boozer, uh, Andre Iguodala, Tayshawn Prince, Rajon Rondo, um, Al Horford, um, Yvonne Shumpert, uh, Kimball Walker. I mean, I can go on and on and on with the guys who I've had a, a hand in their uh, their processes. Uh, and so, I'm, I'm I'm proud of what you know what I've what I've accomplished. Um, hopefully, uh, Patrick Beverly. Uh, one of my favorite people. He's, he's a he is a character. Um, <laughs> great, great, great person. And, and and Mom Lisa, they just they just salted her people. You know, I met them when I was living in Chicago, and you know, I go back to when Patrick was on his way to Toledo, <laughs> University of Toledo. Mm -hmm. And he told me he didn't want to go. And I said, why? He said, I want to bet on myself. I believe in myself. And I said, well, if you don't believe in you, nobody else will. Yeah. Um, Long story short, he, he bets on himself. Um, he goes to uh, Arkansas, and now he's had a 12, 15-year NBA career. You know, so uh, those are the stories that, that, that people aren't aware of and the behind-the-scenes stuff and some of the real-life situations these kids and their families go through because all you, you know, most people turn on the TV and watch them play and, and, and formulate an opinion about them because of what they see during that 48 minutes of a, of a game and not understanding these, these kids and these grown men have real lives. Grown men and grown women have lives outside of what they see. You you talked about um, it's a, it's a bigger conversation. Um, so if you're um, involved in the game today from a leadership position, um, uh, in a position where you have access and you're dealing with players and their families, what's that 
what what are those what are those primary things that you're talking to the families? You're talking to the players and the families about what to look out for, how to move, um, questions to ask. Um, because again, I, I, they, they I we need we need to do a second show. Okay. Uh, to kind of go down the laundry list of that kind of stuff. Again, <laughs> it's lengthy in terms of what these kids and families need to be aware of. Right. Um, and again, uh, creating and understanding the value that they have, and that's that's a you know that is a um, that that is a relationship driven conversation. Okay. Right? Well, I, I'm, I'm going to hold you to that, and maybe maybe we can have a couple special guests to definitely join um, for that conversation. I love it. Um, I love it. I, I'm, going, I'm going to let you go, um, partly because, you know, like I said, I want to see your face. Um, yeah, but I, I, but I know it's, it's, it's a... We, whatever, whatever was going on, we'll, we'll fix it. Together. Yeah, we'll fix it next time. But, but, but it is a Sunday, and I definitely do appreciate uh, you taking time. I know, I know your Sundays are important to you. Um, well, but you, you mentioned your, um, your, your prison time. And um, that I, I purposely didn't lead off with that um, for a reason because um, again that that to me only speaks to the quality of work that you've done and the quality of individual that you are. Um, but but I, but I couldn't help but make make the the comparisons to um, the gentleman I spoke about earlier, Alan Iverson, um, because. You know, he had a situation before uh, Georgetown um, um, arrived on the scene where he had to be pardoned for an incident that took place. Um, and I'm sure you would never have thought you would be connected to Allen Iverson that way. <laughs> or I don't know if anyone has ever brought that up to you that way. Um, so I, I, I found that interesting, um, you know, the fact that you and him both um, came onto the scene uh, from a professional level around the same time. Um, but what has that experience meant to you, Merle? And, I, and I'm saying that in the context of, I've, I've heard you say this many times. Um, I want to phrase it this way. What does owning your own truth uh, feel like? Yeah, I'm, I, and I'm, I've, I've had to be comfortable in the... So I have to learn to embrace my story um, and I have to learn to be comfortable in my own skin and deal with the folks to understand what I've been through, why I've gone through it. And what I have to do at this point in my life, man, is, is, is really leverage what I know, leverage who I know and who knows me and who trusts me and values what I bring to the table whatever opportunities are in front of Well, I, I'm going to uh, post a little bit later on our, um, on our platforms, um, on Twitter specifically. Uh, there's a podcast that you did, uh, and I think it was before you went in, and it's uh, CBB Black Market uh, yeah. Merle that Cold. Was, that was the Sports Illustrated uh, Yahoo Sports. Yeah. You, um, so, so I, I'm going to I'm going to uh, repost that, and I encourage um, any and all to to definitely um, give that a listen, um, because again, it's thorough, it's honest, it's it's, it's passionate, and it, it it's 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 how you corrected me by saying it's a bigger it's a bigger problem, and we need a separate we need a separate episode, um, because again, I mean. You know, this is this is 2023, and uh, you know, the evolution hasn't it hasn't evolved fast enough. Um, it, it's not a level level playing field, and, and it never has. And I take my responsibility pretty serious to be able to to speak to that in a way that's that's been hands on, in a way that it's something that I've gone through. Um, but 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 the family want to thank you for your time. Um, uh, if, I'll definitely try to try to try to get you back on. Um, I will, no, nothing but love. Um, what's what's going on currently with you? 
because we've spoken before uh, about a potential documentary, um, um, something again taking the book to the to to the next level. Uh, is that something you can share with us or? but there's still interest in documentary and and either you know feature film or or series um based on the stories and again the book is a snapshot right there's so many more stories over the course of my 20 20 plus years of being a player and and and, and on the business side of it so there, there's a lot that, that has not been shared but there's some great stories in the book i hope everybody you know takes a chance to Takes it takes a chance and and and, uh, and picks it up, you know. And the intent is to make you laugh, make you make you think, make you think, um, and to pitch you up, right? And help you understand. Like those are those are kind of the four components of, of, of what the book is supposed to do. So again, I hope you guys take a chance to take a time to, to, to check it out. And um, next time we do it. Maybe we have some folks on there that have some some other questions or things that I need to. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I might have to do I might have to do my first Q and A with 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 you, Merle, <laughs> to right, get, get the fans a chance to uh, to ask some questions. Um, the 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 last thing I, I want to ask you, or you know, maybe leave open ended. Um, will someone like yourself um, ever resurface again in a role? where you think um, those bigger problems, uh, the bigger conversations we're talking about, you can see yourself in a leadership position. Um, and if, if that's a question you can't answer, I just wanna let you know, if you do, I'd love to work with you or work for I'd you. Say, I'd say uh, the thought is to never leave the game. The game's been too good to me. And I'm not gonna let um, a, 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 a crooked justice system deter me from helping kids that look like me. And with that, I want to thank Merle. Oh, last thing, Merle, um, um, the picture with Barack. Um, yes. can, can, can we get the backstory to that? Absolutely. Real <laughs> quick. So uh, a friend of mine who ran a lot of the uh, rec centers in the city called one day and said, hey, man, one of the guys that plays with us is, is, is one of Barack's best friends, and he's, he's, uh, he's coming in town and wants to know if we want to hook with him. And I said, absolutely. <laughs> 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 so it was an awesome experience, man, of going through three or four different checkpoints and all that kind of stuff to get up to the, to the gym at the University of Chicago Lab High School to uh, to play, man. It's really, really uh, wonderful to meet him and be a part of him. So, 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 Twin, you know, you know, I would not have gotten that call because I would have been fouling them, Twin. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been picking them up full court, fam. Yeah. But. I'm sure, I'm sure. And then I, I was actually on his team. Then when I wasn't on his team, I was trying to stay away from him. There was too many Secret Service dudes in there with, with guns. So I just said, man, I'm good. Well, I, 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 don't, I don't think it's any accident that something like something like that happened um, to someone like you. Um, and uh, again, you know, you always hear people talk about 10 toes down or, you know, um, you, know you, you represent that. And um, I, and I know that personally, um, and I think what you've done professionally speaks to that. Um, we've had some experiences together where, um, again, your reach and your connect points are are, are through the roof. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk about um, how um, your opportunity to be involved in management in the NBA was right there in front of you, um, because that that that's just what you bring to the equation. Um, but like I said, I look forward to having you back where I can get you get the video right. Um, yeah, no, we'll do it. But I, but I can't I can't thank you enough, man. No, thank you, brother. I appreciate it. And we'll talk soon. Okay. Love you, boy. Love you, brother.